Hello, everybody. Welcome to Discover Dorico for November. Um, I, um, if I've met you this month, then uh, hello. I've been uh, places like on, uh, Ontario and Canada uh, to a conference there. I apologize if I sound uh, slightly snuffly or um, sound like I have a cold. It's because I have. This really is a live stream today. Um, so today I thought uh, we would probably show you some of the things that I know people have been waiting to see. Um, in the last session, we looked at some of the new things that are coming up in 1.2 that you might not have necessarily known were going to be in 1.2. Uh, and in this session, um, I thought we'd show uh, some of the things that we've been talking about for a little while. So we're going to be looking at orchestral cues. Uh, we'll be looking at some of the fingering options, and we'll also be looking at some of the drum notation. Um, I will be, uh, as always, uh, trying to keep up with the, the live chat as well. So uh, hello to people on, on the live chat. If you've got any questions, then uh, you can let me know on there. Uh, and of course, if you've got any questions during the month, then please just email discoverdorico, or one word, at steinberg.de. Um, we've got, I can see some people already saying hello. So that's good. Hopefully, uh, you can all hear me. So uh, let's get started. So. The first thing we'll look at, I think, here is uh, orchestral cues. You can see on my screen here, uh, zoomed out a little bit, but we have uh, an orchestral score. And uh, if I just uh, zoom in a little bit here, you can see that the horns are going to start over here. And maybe it would be nice if we gave them an orchestral cue. Um, so a cue as to when they need to come in, which is normally some smaller notes, probably labeled as to who they need to listen out for. And if they've had some rests for a while, then it's just sometimes a nice way um, of telling them when they need to come in. So uh, what you do in some uh, applications is you choose an instrument and you would uh, select some of the notes and then you'd probably copy them over to another part, maybe the horn part in this case. Um, and then you probably label them and make them smaller and that kind of thing. What we're going to do in Dorico is I'm going to select where I want the cue to happen. So in this case, let's say I want it to happen from this bar here, um, and maybe we'll start it here. So I've selected a few bars. There is a uh, shortcut on the bottom right-hand side down here. So there's a cues, short, uh, cues button, but there's also a shortcut you can use. So if I press Shift U, then I get this little um, a uh, little cues symbol and it's a, a popover and you'll probably be quite used to our popovers by now so in here i'm going to type the, the letter o um, and you'll see by the way that my shortcuts come up across the bottom of the screen so if i press a, a key and forget to tell you what it is it should come up across the bottom there so i've pressed o and it tells me all the instruments that have an o so i'm going to just use oboe i could type oboe but i'll just select the oboe and i've got a little flag appearing here so in um this one is telling me in the score that I have uh, the, an oboe cue. You can choose if you want to to show the cues in, um, in the score, but by default, uh, they normally don't. Um, so now here is the, the horn part with the cue. Now, if I select this uh, something in this horn part, there's a new shortcut you'll be able to use, which is just the letter W, and that will switch you straight into the part that you've got selected. So here you can see the part. Uh, and here you can also see I've got the cue. So I haven't had to do anything apart from, say, give me a cue from the oboe part. Uh, and you'll see here, and there's a little ob. Um, and it's labeled the oboe cue. And you can see I've got some little uh, markers here at the beginning and the end to show me where the oboe cue happens. Um, I can also drag that. So if I want it to appear somewhere else, I can make this uh, bigger or shorter and I can lengthen the cue. Um, you can use shortcuts, you can uh, drag with the mouse. So you can decide what which notes you want to reference from that oboe part. And the useful hit thing here, of course, is that if you should then make a change in the oboe part, then it will automatically be reflected in the parts because they're just referencing uh, that other part. So you can choose the you know the the, the length and, and everything else that you want to happen. Now, of course, there are going to be uh, some properties for these kind of things, uh, as you can see at the bottom. So on an individual basis, um, you can choose the kind of things that show. But of course, also in engraving options, there's a cues option, so you can set these more globally. So here, for example, you can choose the size of the queue. So at the moment, the default is that it's set to three quarters. So it will be 75% the size of a normal note. Um, you can also choose a few other things in here. So for example, um, which notations do you want to include? So you don't necessarily, for example, um, include things like staccato dots and articulations inside the queue. So you can choose whether or not you want to display them. The same with slurs. Do you want the slurs? Do you want the dynamics to appear in the queue? Um, do you want the playing techniques to appear? Do you want ornaments? You know, th there's lots of options in here that you can choose 
on a global basis which ones you want to, to appear. Also with the queue labels, um, uh, where do you want the labels to be? So always at the above or follow the stem direction. Um, and also things like the instrument names. Do you want the instrument name to appear as the short version, the abbreviated version, or the full version of that one? Um, uh, just to answer one of the questions, Keys, yes, the W shortcut is available all the time. So just it's a, a switch way, a switch way. Oh dear, it's a fast way of switching to the current part. Uh, oh, Ben's just answered your question. <clears throat> um, uh, so carrying on, so the, the instrument um, pitch or transposition, octave transpositions can also be taken care of. Um, you can also decide things like which clef you want to appear at that point. So if it would be a confusing clef, uh, then you can choose uh, those kind of options as well. Uh, and of course, uh, what happens, and sometimes in jazz charts, especially, you might show play at the next entry to uh, to remind people that they need to start playing at that point, even though the notes change size. Um, but by default, that one's off as well. Um, and you can also choose rhythmic cues. So you can say, although you can take all of these notes, um, just make them all the same pitch, uh, just to show me rhythmically what's going on at that point. Uh, and you've got that option as well. So these are the, the kind of the global options and engraving options for those. But you can choose all of those options down here as well. So for any particular cue, you can say, I want to show a rhythmic cue and I put them all on the same, uh, the same line. Um, a little hide option, but also all of the other options. So maybe on this particular case, you did want to, if there were slurs, you maybe wanted to show the slurs or not. Um, so you can choose those kind of things as well. <clears throat> uh, so now, yes, with anything selected, if I just press W, then it'll jump me back to the uh, the score as well. So that gives you kind of a quick overview, hopefully, of, uh, of the kind of things. But as you can see, it, it's a very easy thing to do. Oh, also, um, actually, while I think about it, uh, one other little thing you might find useful with cues. So here's our oboe cue down here. Um, if I switch to galley view, um, then you'll notice in galley view, you will see the cues by default. So here you can see the, uh, the cue. So when you're writing the music, then uh, if you're using galley view, then you will see them. And if you just switch to page view, then uh, you won't see them anymore. So where were we? I was selected something. Here we go. Yeah. So you, you won't see them anymore. But there is also uh, an option in the layouts. So in layout options, you can choose, I think it's for any particular player, whether or not you want to show the cues or not. So if you want to show them in your orchestral score, you can. So that's the kind of things we've been working on with cues. Now there's a, a lot of options in there and, um, you know, especially to do with the octaves, uh, transpositions for instruments and, um, which clefs you want to show and those kind of things. So uh, I, I'm sure you'll you'll all have a, a good play with those when they're available. Uh, no, I'm not going to tell you today um, when this uh, next version of Dorico is going to be released, unfortunately. Um, but we've still got plenty of time uh, in Octo in um, in Octo in the autumn. We said it will be an, an autumn update, so of course you'll be able to play with it over Christmas, of course. So uh, the next option I want to look at. Uh, is some fingering options. <clears throat> so we're going to start with, um, I've, I've mocked up a few examples here already. Uh, so this particular case is one for piano. So you can see I've marked in some of the fingerings here um, already on some of these notes. And the way I've done that is that you can just select a note uh, and then press, the, well, there, there is an option down here. Of course, there's a button down here in the panel uh, for fingerings and the shortcut is shift and F, shift plus F. So I'll do shift F and I get a, a little pop over. So into this one, I can just type, for example, the number four and I get the number four uh, in the right position and uh, size and everything. On this note here, then if I enter the fingering, then I can just put in a five and I will automatically get a little one in brackets underneath because it's uh, by default, it's reminding me that this uh, tied note here still has the uh, the fingering uh, position number one. Um, for that one. Similarly, because they're attached to individual notes, if I, I need to select both of these notes, and then if I press Shift F, I can type one comma four, or actually, if I want to, then I, if I just undo that, I can press uh, four comma one. Uh, Dorico knows which way around those should go. So it's now put in the, the correct fingering here for, for these two notes. And you'll see as I select each individual note, you'll see Dorico knows which note they are attached to. So if you just need to change one of them, then, then you can uh, come in and do that one. 
And yes, sir, there are a few accidentals in this. It was just a, a, a quick mock-up version. I didn't even put a key signature in. I should have done that. Probably shouldn't be a C-sharp, really. Um, and uh, what else do that? Oh, yes, on this one here. So if I click on this stem here, it's a quick way of selecting both of these notes. So I've selected the stem. It's automatically selected both of the notes. So when I do um, Shift F and just press 2, comma 4, then it will put those uh, those fingerings in as well. It's moved the pedal marking away slightly as well so that they make sense. Now, <clears throat> in, the, in our properties panel at the bottom, if I scroll over to the right, there's uh, some options here. So for an individual note, I can see the fingering or position and I can edit that in here. There's also options for when you enter them, if you want to do um, substitutions and, and things like that, so, and you can do things like start on finger one and move to finger three and that kind of thing, uh, if you want to enter those. So you can enter things like one hyphen three uh, in, in the little popover as well. Um, and then there's also a few things like uh, the, the staff relative position options. Uh, and if I select the uh, some of these notes here, then you can, you can uh, see some of the options. And if you're in, um, if you're in engraving mode, um, then there's also some options as to whether their um, slur related position is inside or outside this slur. Um, and you can do that on an individual basis, but also in engraving options, if I uh, go here to the fingering options, then there's a number of options in here that you can set. So for example, bold font is our default appearance um, and the uh, plain font is, is another option in there. Um, there's the size of fingerings on grace notes that you can, so do you want full size or do you want scale to the grace note size? Um, this is the, the, the substitution appearance, so uh, there's a couple of options there and how, how things will display. And you can see there's a, a, a number of other options here. Multiple notes play with the same finger, do you want a little bracket or not? Do you want to show the uh, two of the same finger? Um, so the, there's a number of options in here that you can that you can see, obviously, as I scroll down. But there's also, when you position things, do you want them inside a slur or do you want them outside? And then in this particular case, I probably want them outside in, part, in this piece. Um, and you can see, obviously, uh, there's a rel relative to staff or there's a follow voice directions and, uh, you know, various other options and things that you can see in here. So I can press apply and, and close. So now all of these have now moved to the outside, which actually in this particular case looks a bit nicer because it gets them all out of the way, especially when you've got numbers in here for the, the tuplets as well. So so for piano fingering options, uh, there, there's a... Um, There'll be a good few pages in the version history of things that you can read about and as to how you want to do uh, various things on here. But it also includes things like, for example, trumpet fingerings and other brass and string fingerings. So uh, here's a couple of examples for this trumpet here. Um, uh, I've entered some of them here and you can see it's already put some of them in. All you have to do is select a note, do the same uh, with the fingering option. I'm just going to press 2, 3, so 23, and it's automatically putting those in so it knows which valves uh, you need to press on the trumpet. Um, so, uh, and again, in uh, when we were looking at the engraving options, uh, we're just going getting down to that part in the, the brass section. If we scroll down to the bottom, where is it gone? Here we go. So, uh, you know, do you want them stacked vertically? Do you want them shown as a single row? Uh, do you want a separator between the num the valve numbers? Uh, there's also some options, for example, for the French horns. Um, so the horn branches, you can do those. So if I just move on in this piece here, here's a um, another flow we have here with the horn options in. So you can see when I select one of the options, uh, one of the notes here with the fingering attached to it, then <clears throat> in the, the fingering options, in our properties panel, you can switch between whether they're above or below. Uh, and also for the horn branch, you can choose a number of options. So do you want to, to show the thumb trigger or uh, B flat or F or anything else? You can display those in here. And then our engraving options again for the French horn, um, you can then decide how they display. So uh, do you want to separate it between them and, uh, and things like that? Um, and if we just move down, things like the, the trombone, you can uh, display Arabic numerals or Roman numerals. Uh, and there's also some options for string fingering uh, in here as well, <clears throat> and how you want those to display. Um, so moving on in this uh, piece, here's another flow, and here we have trombone options. So when I select this one, you can see it says the fingering position in here. Uh, and all you need to do, if I just delete one of these, uh, or in fact, if I, I can turn it off here from the properties section, if I select a note and I was to add the fingering and just say five, because I've told it in the preferences to uh, to show Roman numerals, then that's what it will do and it will convert that for me. 
So you've got a number of options there for uh, fingering options and where they display and um, you know above or below the staff and uh, and anything else um, and yeah and, and you'll be able to enter all of those and again there'll be uh, more information when this version is released in the version history document. Um, so moving on now to drums uh, and drum options. So I have a file here that I'm going to use just to start um, some uh, with some drum notation. Now there's a number of different ways of doing this. <clears throat> some of them are will sound a little bit more complicated to explain um, when you're just looking at the screen. So I'll, uh, I'll I'll do my best. Know that there are a lot of options here, and if we don't do exactly the thing that you want by default, then you know there, there'll be a way to to edit to to get to where you want to be. So on a drum set, if I double click here, you'll notice the first difference is that my carrot line is very small and I can use the arrow keys to move that up and down if I want to. And you can see I've got all the various parts of my drum kit are then showing um, along with the rhythm grid that I've got displayed. I'm in 12.8, so it's, uh, it's showing me appropriately. So for example, um, down here, um, at the bottom of the drum kit, um, you can press the letters uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G on your keyboard. So for example, if you think of this at the moment, uh, as a treble clef, then F will give you a bass drum, as you uh, may expect. I'm going to change the, the value to quaver, press another F, and then if I press C, then it's going to put in a snare drum. Now, normally in pitch notation, you get the C closest, but we know that that doesn't really make a lot of sense. C, in this case, it makes sense to be the snare drum. So I can press C and I can go back to, uh, I can go back to F, and it will then put in the, not the next closest F, but it will put in what it thinks I will probably want um, uh, as an F. So I can keep going if I wanted to do it this way, um, and I can en uh, enter things like that way. If I go back to the beginning of this bar, um, oh, I, as I said, I can move up and down if I want all the various other bits of the drums. And of course, at the top, we've got some symbols. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to press, uh, for example, B, and I'm going to get a crash symbol. And it's already doing the right uh, note head, and it's also auto automatically doing voices, so I'm not I've not done anything to tell it that I'm using different voices. It just, by default, is saying, oh, well, hang on a minute. Um, you know, th that's a symbol, so uh, let's, let's do it this way around. Um, uh, Kerry, I'll get to your uh, questions in a minute about um, MIDI things as well. Um, so I'm now going to enter some of these. So I'm going to press G, um, and I can keep pressing G. In fact, no, let's have let's have lots and lots of hi-hats. There we go. So we can enter hi-hats, and it's, it's doing the rest of those automatically. Now, that's you know that that's great if if that's what you, the way you want to do it. So, um, some of the other options that you might want to do um, in the preferences section here, there is an option for now for percussion input on whether you want to use staff position or percussion map. So, if you're using staff position as we've just been doing, then you could press F on a MIDI keyboard, and you'll get the uh, a bass drum correctly. And if you press C, then you'd get a snare drum. It's um, so when I actually input those notes, it's the wrong sound, admittedly, but um, they are correct when they play back. Um, now, if you can also, as well as thinking of it as a treble clef, if you prefer to think of it as a bass clef, then you can switch to that. So instead of this being uh, F and C, if you think of this as A and E, then you can switch this to bass clef and it will interpret it as bass clef. Or if you think of it as a kind of general MIDI drum map, then you can, if you want to, use uh, use percussion map. So uh, in this particular case, if I switch this one over, I'm going to go back to the beginning of this bar. Um, when I press um, C, so it's oops, I press two notes at the same time. When I press C, then uh, which is basically two octaves below middle C, then that's giving me my bass drum, and E gives me my snare drum, um, and things like F sharp is my hi hats, and I've also got toms, and I've got other various symbols and things up here. So now if you think of it a bit like playing chords, so I'm just double clicked here to get my carrot back to where I want it to be. Um, and uh, JK on the live chat, unfortunately the live recording bit, we don't have um, live input yet, but uh, let's do it this way for a second. So uh, if I input this drum part, then I can enter effectively playing chords. So I'm playing, C's, F sharps, and occasionally E's for the snare drum here. Uh, and then if I um, enter, uh, let's enter some more notes here. So I'm effectively playing chords at this point, 
and it's working out where it wants to put things. So if I want to do two uh, crash symbols at the same time, then I can do that in uh, carry on playing chords. And I'll uh, do the same here as I was doing before and see if I can work this out while I'm talking, which is always uh, tricky for my brain. Uh, let's do that one. Oh, I've gone on slightly too far. There we go. I'm just going to press undo. That'll do. Um, and then we can carry on. So, so you can see it's a relatively quick way of inputting drum parts. And I can um, change the note values here. Uh, so let's say we want to do uh, this. Uh, what should we finish with? There we go. So when I play this on back. So you get the idea. So um, you know you, that, that's one way that, that you can use to, to input notes. Now I haven't, like I said, I haven't done anything regarding voices at this point or, or anything else. Now there are a few other options because uh, you might say, well, um, for example, if you uh, in your uh, sorry in the, the players section for layout options, you might want to display your drum kit instead of a five line staff, but as a, a, a drum grid. So if I just move this window out of the way for a minute. So here we have all of the instruments that are in the drum kit, and they're all laid out on a drum grid instead. And if you want to, then you can, uh, when you're inputting any notes on here, you can start your carrot, and you can move this carrot up and down to all of the various instruments on the drum grid if you want to do it that way. Um, you also have options uh, when I go to, so if I show you on this dialog here, if I switch to single line instruments, then you can expand all of these out to single instruments as well. So now it looks like a kind of percussion set, but it's expanded the entire drum kit out to percussion. Now, what this is also quite useful for is it means that you can do things like say, actually, my kick drum was um, was playing rhythms like this, and you can do one bar and then repeat it, for example, which might be useful, um, and maybe your uh, you know the, the hi hats maybe were uh, obviously just repeating the, the sections, things like that. And maybe the uh, the snare drum, then you just want to enter all the time as dotted crotchets. Now this means that when you go back to a five line staff, that what you'd end up with is things like this. And you'd also get this if you import MIDI files and things like that, where you get sometimes get notes that are, that are uh, tied over and that kind of thing. So if I go into uh, my engraving options, uh, sorry, my notation options, then I can say, do I want to use ties to show the full duration, which is the default, or do I want to truncate to the shortest duration? So if I just press apply on that one, that's all I've done, then it's tidied up this drum part and it's uh, made everything look uh, look a lot, a lot nicer. You can also say, do you want to use the voicing here or do you want to use single voice? So I can press apply on this one and it will just switch it all to effectively use a single voice if I want to. So depending on how complicated your drum parts are, that, that may also be useful. If I go back to using uh, voicing, uh, as we, we've got here, um, uh, you may also have some other things that you want to do. Um, oh, somebody just said, can I show open hi-hats? So um, I'm just going to use a, a playing technique and put open on that one there. Um, so now we get. Um, now, if you want to edit your drum kit, if I go back to setup mode in here, I can uh, select my drum set and do edit percussion kit. Uh, so in my percussion kit here, it may be, for example, that you don't want your hi-hats to be all the way up here. So you can choose your hi-hat. And you can say, actually, put my hi-hat down here, which is uh, effectively the E space if you're thinking in a treble clef. So when I press apply, instead of kind of copying and pasting and moving everything else around, it's just moved all of those hi-hats, including the, the open one up there. It knows that that hi-hat has, uh, has now moved to be somewhere else. So you can define exactly where you want things to sit. I also know that some people would like their snare drum, for example. In my snare drum here, it's automatically doing the, if you like voice two or stems down, um, and I can switch that just to be stems up. I can also maybe switch my toms because some people prefer to see everything that's feet 
uh, stems down and everything that's played with hands stems up. So if I switch all of those and just press apply, then you can see on this part here, it's now switched everything over. So now I've got uh, stems up and stems down has been switched. So if you want to decide where you want things to sit on your drum kit, you can move all of these around and define your own kit to be wherever you want it to be. You can also define the note heads that are being used, and you can define things to do with the percussion playing techniques. Now, similarly, this is the five line staff. If you want to do this for the grid and you want to show the grid in a different form uh, or maybe you just don't want as many instruments in your drum kit maybe you don't need two wood blocks in your drum kit uh, and a cowbell uh, if you for your single line instruments for example uh, when you're displaying a single line instruments if you want to decide which order things are displaying in or have more or less instruments then you can also do that from here so you can decide which um which way you want to de define your drum kit. You may also find that if you write so much cowbell that you need that as a separate part. Uh, everybody needs more cowbell. So for things like the, any instrument you want to add or remove, there's some buttons down here, and you can remove the instrument from the kit, which uh, doesn't delete it. That's this button over here for deleting an instrument. But uh, if I take this one, I can remove the instrument from the kit, and you'll see over here it's now added it as a separate part for the cowbell. So if I close this dialog, then uh, you can now have a separate part of the cowbell. And at the moment, I haven't written anything. But you can also, if I had a, another player to give it to, I can give the cowbell to another player. So now, if you need to write a separate cowbell part, and I've now got a new layout for it over here, then you can uh, take some of the drum kit parts, and you can, once they get complicated, you can give them to other players if you want to, and vice versa. So if you write for a whole bunch of percussion instruments, and then decide actually you need this to be on a drum kit, then in the same way in the editor, you can select those instruments and you can add them back into a drum kit if you want to. So there's quite a lot of flexibility there as to uh, what you want to do, how you want to um, to show things. And if our uh, defaults for, for that input kind of thing um, aren't what you need, then then you can, you can still uh, edit them to be to to be the layout that you want to use. In the play section over here, there's also a percussion maps option, so you can decide how things play back. So at the moment, I was just happening to use a kit which uses the general MIDI option here. So I've got all of the MIDI note numbers are individual bits of the drum kit, and you can uh, you can see all of the individual bits of the drum kit and, and how they would play. And some of them are playing techniques as well. So some of them will be um, side. Um, side sticks or swish or anything else. Some of them, there's a, you see there's an empty key switch column here. Some instruments like this one here for the, the, the snare combi will use key switches instead. So if you have, uh, if you want to, to set this up with uh, another uh, sample library and you want to set up some of the key switches or import them, then of course there's import library options and export library options as well, then you'll also be able to do this and, uh, and edit them from here. So depending on whether they're um, you know, individual instruments or multiple instruments, you'll be able to add all of these options uh, and define playback wise also what happens. So you can do the input side how you want it, whether it's, you know, like I said, as a percussion map or as a thinking of it as a treble clef or however you want to input it, you can edit the drum kit to show all of the uh, the individual lines and spaces and which in which notes you want and which note heads you want to use. You don't have to think about voices anymore when you're inputting these because it will just automatically put the stems up and stems down as you want them, as you've defined in your drum kit. And then playback wise, you can uh, you can decide in here how you want those individual notes to play back as well. Um, now, uh, of course, you know, there, there are some options um, in here as well in, uh, in engraving options. So uh, how you want some of these things to display as well. Um, and, like, and as I uh, said before, there's also some of these options in notation options for, um, to, for how you want some of these options to display. So I know this is kind of a, a, a quick overview, um, but um, yes, you, you can do um, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do in drum kits here, and again, there'll be there'll be a lot more in the version history as to kind of how you uh, get hold of this and, and edit all of this. And all of these will be in the update, which is our forthcoming update for this autumn. Um, no, I'm still not going to tell you what what date that is. Um, so uh, that's about it from from me today. I just wanted to show you um, lots of the the options in here. We'll be around uh, to answer some of the questions that you've uh, that you've got uh, in the live chat. If you've got any questions about this stuff, now 
because you can't do a lot of this stuff, I'd say for, for a lot of it at the moment, just wait. It's a free update. All of this will be in our forthcoming free update. So you will be able to play with all of these. And it's a, a, a free, uh, well, it will be early Christmas present from us. Um, now, and, and you may well have questions about all these these kind of things, but I, I'd say probably you want to wait till uh, till you can actually use some of these. But if you have questions that you want us to answer in uh, further Discover Dorico sessions, then just email me on discoverdorico at steinberg.de. Uh, and I, I'll do my best to, to answer your questions. And if you've got examples and things that you also think would be useful for other people, email me them in, email those projects in, and we can use them in, in future sessions. The next Discover Dorico session will be on Wednesday, the 20th of December. So it'll be the week before Christmas. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd love to know what are the kind of things that you would like to see in that session. Uh, I have had um, some ideas from, from people um but that doesn't you know that, that doesn't mean you can't send me a few more uh so please email me on discoverdorico at steinberg.de um you'll also have noticed in the last month uh, the website dorico.com has now launched so there's some information on there if uh, you have any friends that you'd like to use dorico just direct them to dorico.com and they can download the free 30-day trial and uh, and again, I'll, I'll probably also, you'll see me on the Facebook groups as well. So if you look for Dorico in any of the Facebook groups, then we can also take questions there as well, of course, in our official forum uh, on the Steinberg website. Uh, and as I said, by emailing me, uh, if you want to, on discoverdorico at steinberg.de. So thank you very much for watching this session. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see in the next one. And uh, we'll now uh, just check on some of the live chat uh, and see you on there. Thank you.